Hi there. Today, I'm going to take up this rather complex RLC series circuit. What we have in front of you is a circuit that we're incorporating elements of resistance, inductance, as well as capacitance. And prior to doing this, I want to talk a little bit more about some of the special and unique properties of inductors as well as capacitors. Now, inductors are known for opposing a change of current. Conversely, capacitors are known for opposing a change of voltage. Now, when we put two of those things together in the same circuit, something special happens. What happens is that capacitors are known for generating reactive power and inductors absorb reactive power. So they kind of negate one another. And what we're going to do through the process of solving for these missing values is I'm also going to go and take a look at building this circuit using my lab volt workstation. I purposely have used values in this circuit that are consistent with what we could find in a lab volt workstation. And I'm going to use an oscilloscope so that we can examine the voltage and current relationship that occurs in real time with this circuit. It's going to be very interesting. So come along for the ride. So here I have at my terminal an oscilloscope display and I've got the power going to the circuit based off of the values that I have on the board. What we can see, and I'm just going to freeze this for a moment, is the teal blue waveform represents the current and this bright gold waveform represents the voltage. Now this is the voltage in current for the entire circuit. Now in the calculations the angle theta was calculated as 10.11 degrees. Now each one of these divisions here represents about 10 degrees. You'll notice that there's almost, and if I move the cursor, that I don't have exactly 10 degrees. I've probably got about 6. Now, there is a discrepancy. Well, what's happening is the load modules that I'm using, the resistive, inductive, and capacitive load modules, they're fixed values, and they're, we've set them, and they are fairly accurate, but they're not extremely precise. So we're off by about almost five degrees, but we are in the neighborhood. The trend is what we're looking at. Specifically, the voltage and current relationship. And if you look on my current waveform, if I, where it intersects with this plane, if I look ahead, my voltage is leading the current by about angle theta. Now in this case here, this is about six to seven degrees, and we've calculated 10. So we're off by a little bit. But I think this only tells part of the story. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the current waveforms, and what I want to do is I want to examine how the voltage drop across the inductor and the voltage drop across the capacitor interact with one another. We've read the textbooks. Apparently, inductors oppose a change of current, capacitors oppose a change of voltage. Well, how do they interact? And that's what I want to look at. So let's turn this off, and we're going to turn on two more channels that's reading the voltage drops across the inductors and the capacitors. And we're going to look at the voltage across the inductor, and I'm going to turn on this channel and we're going to look at the voltage drop across the capacitor load module. And well, what do you see here? They're actually the polar opposite to one another. Isn't that again fascinating? Capacitors basically counteract the effects of an inductor. And here's proof. Now, I could go and play with the load module, and all I'm going to do is if I turn off some of the toggle switches, all you're going to see is the amplitude of the sine wave is going to change, but not the relationship. They still oppose one another. Same thing would apply 
if I did this with the capacitors. So if I turn off some of the capacitors in that capacitor load module, let's take a look. Is this going to alter the relationship? Oh, drawing a little bit too much current there. But it's not altering the relationship. The phase angle difference is unaltered, or unaffected, I should say. Now, what if I started playing with the resistance? Let's take a look. The only thing that's doing is it's lowering the voltage drops. But if we look, the relationship or the phase angle difference remains the same. Now, why don't we have a look at how the voltage and current relationship for the entire circuit is affected if I start playing with the amount of capacitance that's in the circuit or conversely, the amount of inductive reactance in the circuit. So I'm going to reset a couple things and I'm going to be right back. So here I am. I've got the two waveforms. Teal blue represents current and this bright yellow one or gold represents the input voltage. Now, have a look at the voltage and current relationship when I start to take resistance out of the circuit and see if that affects anything. So as I take resistance out of the circuit, what we see is that the relationship between the voltage and current remains unaffected. What's happening is the amplitude of the current is actually lowering because, as we can see, the relationship between the voltage and current is unaffected. Only the amplitude of the current because of the fact that our applied voltage is going to be consistent. So I'm going to bring back the value of resistance we were working with previously. Now, what about if I started to take some capacitance out of the circuit? Now, I said earlier that capacitors basically help negate the negative effects of an inductor. If I take capacitance out of the circuit, what's going to be the net result? Well, I know for a fact that I'm going to see an increase in the phase angle difference between my voltage and current. So let's see. So moving over here, you know, I'm going to put the smallest value of capacitor in, and now I'm going to progressively take capacitance out of the circuit. And let's take a look here. Wow, that just shifted dramatically. Another capacitor out of the circuit. See, the phase angle difference is getting wider and wider. A little bit more. And now, if we look at this, every graduation on this scale accounts for about 10 degrees. So I've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, almost 90 Oh, a little bit more, 90 degrees of phase angle difference. Now, because of the, uh, this very shallow waveform of the current, because we're drawing less current, because I've taken capacitance out of the circuit, you can see it's hard to tell, but I've got almost 90 degrees of phase angle difference. Let's... Now, what about inductance? What if I take inductance out of the circuit? Because of the fact that this shifted this way when I took uh, induct, uh, capacitance out of the circuit, I would estimate that if I take inductors out of the circuit, this is going to shift to the right. And look, the phase angle is shifting towards the right, showing that what are we, what are we doing is we're actually trying to manipulate that phase angle difference so that we're trying to bring about a better power factor. And so we've shifted further right now by adding inductance and putting inductance back into the circuit.
we can see that my phase angle difference is now the waveform is shifting consistently to the left and it's trying to realign itself back to being closer in phase with the voltage and current. Now, big picture, big picture moment. Why is this important? Well, the more my voltage and current are in phase with one another, that means my circuit is going to be drawing less reactive power and my overall efficiency is going to increase. My power factor is going to become better. Now, power factor is expressed as a percentage. Well, because of this, there's so little phase angle difference, this represents good power factor in and around 90% is what the industry average is. You and you have power that falls beyond this, you're actually inefficient and the utility has to provide you with all of the true power your equipment requires plus all of the reactive power or what we would call the magnetizing current to make an electric motor run. The utilities don't like losing money and so they will penalize commercial customers for poor power factor. So power factor is a real thing and we're going to be uh, following this a lot deeper in the coming days and weeks. It's my hope that you found today's examination of how inductors and capacitors will behave in a circuit to be both informative and helpful and maybe even deepen your understanding about how an RLC circuit works or how capacitors are extremely useful in helping to correct poor power factor by in, uh, injecting reactive power into a circuit. Stay tuned for more videos where we're going to be looking at power factor. I will be using a single phase induction motor and I'm going to show you in real time what power factor correction is really all about. Until we meet again, stay safe.